Good evening, everyone. So welcome to the uh, online ILS chat and uh, congratulations on your acceptance to the honors program, honors college at the University of Maryland. I am Najib El Sayed. I'm the director of ILS. I'm also professor of cell biology and molecular genetics. So we're here this evening to introduce you to a very special uh, living learning community, which is designed to ease your entry at the University of Maryland and prepare you for uh, future success, wherever your aspirations may be in the life sciences. Of course, uh, we're here to answer many of your questions following a very brief overview of our program. I'm not here by myself. I'm here, I'm accompanied by the Associate Director, Dr. Sabrina Kramer, who will introduce herself in a moment. She's uh, waving currently. Uh, and we're also uh, joined by uh, three uh, wonderful, brilliant ILS students who have agreed to answer all your questions and share their experience of ILS. In fact, they also will be introducing themselves in a moment. They are the stars of the show tonight. So uh, uh, you will hear a 10, 15 minute presentation maximum, and then we'll move on to questions, uh, especially addressed to our student panel. So perhaps we can go to introductions. Dr. Kramer. Um, can you switch? There we go. Hello, everyone. I'm the Associate Director for ILS. So I am, I am a proud uh, TERP alum. I got my PhD in 2008 from the University of Maryland. Um, I am, uh, my PhD is in plant virology. I teach our cell bio class, which the vast majority of our sophomores take. I handle our curriculum. I run our internship program. Um, and I've also worked at a teaching center on campus for many years. So higher education and improving um, science education is something that I get really excited about. And with that, I shall hand off to Dahe. Hello, um, my name is Dahe, I use she, her pronouns, and I am a senior um, majoring in biology um, with the, the physiology and neurobiology concentration and also criminology and criminal justice with a minor in Asian American studies. Uh, career plans, I'm currently undecided, but possibly on like the pre-law policy track. Um, I think the intersection between science and law is really cool. Um, and my favorite part about ILS, a thousand percent, the people, um, all like the friends that I've met and the faculty staff members I've met, they've all been so incredibly supportive about everything that I've done. Yeah. Thank you, Dahe. Ashley. Hi everyone, my name is Ashley. I am a junior neuroscience major. Um, my career plan is for medical school, and my favorite part about ILS, uh, not to sound trite, but also the people, I actually currently live in an apartment with three other of my, my ILS cohort peers, um, so that just goes to show like how amazing these friendships and bonds are, um, as well as being able to get connected to internships and re research opportunities uh, with the faculty and the uh, other ILS people that you get connected with. Thank you, Ashley. Luke? Hi, everyone. My name is Luke. Uh, I'm also a biology major with a concentration in neurobiology and physiology. I also double major in public health science. I'm currently on the pre-PA track. We'll might decide on a PhD later on, but we'll see. My favorite part of ILS, everyone's already said the people so far, so I'm going to go a different route and say the classes. I think the uh, classes that we take specific to ILS, one of which is taught by uh, the illustrious Dr. Kramer, um, Actually, I guess Dr. El Zayed, maybe you teach 207, I don't remember. I had that with the former director. Um, but definitely one of my favorite parts of the program, uh, just to give you a different glimpse other than just the people, which are, of course, amazing. My roommate, who I lived with freshman years in the room over there. So still live with him. Thank you, Luke. And you'll be hearing from uh, the panel very shortly. You'll be asking them questions and they'll be answering directly. So let me just give you a very quick overview of the Honors College. Some of you are coming from the previous sessions, so you've already heard it. Uh, as you may know, the Honors College is a home to uh, many highly acclaimed living learning programs for students with exceptional uh, academic talents just like yours. So. Uh, I love
promote innovative learning environments and opportunities for research and study in the Washington DC area and Baltimore area, of course. So let me tell you a little bit about uh, studying in the uh, integrated life sciences. And then after the slide, I'll pass this on to Dr. Kramer, who will tell you a little bit more about our curriculum. But uh, here are, if you want, the four pillars of ILS and what defines ILS. As I mentioned earlier, our goal is to make your transition easier and to prepare you or to prepare your student uh, for future success in uh, well-respected professional schools and medical schools or wherever their aspirations and careers take them. And uh, we achieved this through four main things. First, an accelerated academic program that starts with sophomore level classes. So students who are invited to join ILS would have already received full credit for freshman biology sequence, either through uh, biology AP or some other mechanism. Uh, the ILS classes, as you've heard, are the wonderful, especially they're specifically structured to enhance uh, active learning and small group collaboration, uh, which has been shown to uh, facilitate uh, deep learning. The, uh, we also, as a program, will facilitate research opportunities on the University of Maryland campus, but also in the various federal research institutions around the area and local schools of medicine. Uh, so as you may know, uh, or uh, uh, maybe you don't actually, rigorous scientific inquiry and the development of uh, cutting edge uh, research skills are also central to the ILS mission. So uh, we guide our students through uh, an authentic and meaningful research experience uh, that will, and uh, internship uh, uh, that will be relevant to their career goal actually. So even if some of the students are not aiming to continue in a research career, they may want to go to PA school or some other professional career or medical school, we still want them to pursue research as a major component uh, uh, because learning how to engage in scientific inquiry and reasoning is going to allow them to incorporate research findings not only in their professional practice but also make better decisions in their personal lives. The, uh, uh, also, service. Service is a very important part of ILS. It did not used to be, but the students wanted that component to be part of ILS. Uh, the students in ILS will dedicate a portion of their time and talent serving local community partners uh, as first year students. These projects that they will carry on, they, they will carry out, are typically self-selected, and uh, that uh, uh, that service learning experience is really central to providing the ILS student with a holistic perspective to their rigorous coursework. It encourages uh, ILS students to learn from people uh, whose backgrounds are different from their own, and uh, of course, encourages inclusive relationship building. And finally, the the ILS community, and you're going. To to hear a lot about the community from our students. Uh, the development of an inclusive community uh, focused both on living and learning together is absolutely the central mission and the most valued aspect of, uh, of, uh, of the ILS experience. Uh, so it's designed to help the ILS student with their maybe sometimes a rocky transition to the university. It provides that safety net, which helps increase their engagement and build a launching pad for success on campus and outside. So as you will see, we are very purposeful, intentional in our effort to encourage our students to work together in order to better facilitate their learning and uh, success at university. I just actually do have one more slide before I pass this on to Dr. Kramer, because I want to show you the results. They do actually speak for themselves. Uh, our students have a very high success rate for applying when they apply to all sorts of professional schools and graduate school. And here you can see the breakdown of what the typical ILS student is majoring in, about 60% Bio e, uh, I mean bio, biological sciences, uh, about 20% in bioengineering or chemical engineering, another 10% biochem, chem, and 10% in other majors. Uh, and typically, uh, the professional goals are about half uh, wanting to go to medical school, another 5% want to do an MD, PhD, about 15% want to go to graduate school, 15% want to join the workforce, and 12% will go to seek other professional degrees. The, Sabrina, uh, the next slide is yours. Thank you, Najib. Um, so I help to organize and run the courses for ILS. Um, as part of the ILS program, you would take our intro course, which was essentially our introduction to the university where you would 
um, learn about everything from health and wellness to how to get along to your roommate, um, as well as um, where our service learning um, credits are actually housed. So that's in HLSC 100 and 102. So there's a required service learning component and that's part of those courses. Um, HLSC 208, you would take in your first semester, which is our new course um, that is a sophomore level course um, about, and Najib, correct me if I'm wrong, about biology as well as data science and a little bit of introduction to computational biology. Um, second semester is genetics and genomics. Those are required curriculum. Um, so, so students don't have a choice there. But in the second year, students can choose any two of the courses that are listed there. Um, so that includes cell biology, which is um, one of the most common courses that students take, which is my course. Um, but you can also take um, science writing. There are two different um, public health courses. Um, we teach a one credit ethics course, which is also new this year um, in the spring, bioinformatics. And we have a, um, a study abroad course in London that runs every three years. So Dahe was with us the last time. And it was literally, I think, weeks before everything shut down from COVID the last time we ran. So it was definitely an experience, but I'm sure Dahe can talk more about that. Um, and you can see at the bottom some of our different faculty. Um, so Dr. Hall teaches the bioinformatics course. Ms. Anzel runs the HLSC 100 and 102. She's our assistant director um, and also does a good chunk of our advising. Um, Dr. Pick um, teaches our genetics course. So I've been, I haven't been able to talk and type as quickly as possible, but we've been getting um, a bunch of questions about AP credit and other things. So I'm just gonna go ahead and address that verbally. So we start with sophomore level courses. And to do that, you need to have the prerequisites, which include the freshman level courses. Um, so that's um, by sci at, at least by sci 170, um, but most students will come in with both 160 and 170 equivalents. Um, this is all handled by the transfer office, but what does that mean for you? Um, so if you're in AP classes, an AP score in biology of four or five will transfer in both um, freshman biology courses, the both first and second semester courses. If you're an IB, um, IB HL for um, biology that will transfer in just 170 and that's fine. If you're taking community college credit, it's gonna depend on the course, um, but you can check that transfer um, credit database. If you want more information, we're happy to send that to you. Um, but it kind of depends on, on how that transfers into to the University of Maryland, but there's a big table you can check. Um, so if you have already taken your AP exams um, or IB or community college credit, um, make sure to enter that into the preferencing form when you do so we know that information. If you're planning to take it um, or planning to finish those courses um, this semester or this, you know, this coming May to take your um, AP exam, um, make sure we have all that information also in your preferencing form. We've gotten really good over the years of being able to predict how well people will do um, based on how you've done in your other um, AP exams or other courses as well. So enter all that information in um, and that'll help us better um, uh, get you situated into your honors program. Okay, so I also uh, handle and organize the internship um, part of our program. So there is a required internship. It's about 240 hours. Um, we do not do that for you, but we help you along the way. So I will come into your class and help you figure out how to write a professional resume, how to talk to faculty members, how to apply for internships. Um, on the bright side, that means that you're able to apply to a wide range of different opportunities based on your individual interests. Um, and it can be during a summer or a winter or during the school year paid or unpaid on campus or off campus. There's a lot of variety and we help you through that process. So you don't have to do that on your own. Um, we have students going to a wide range of institutions. You can see some of them listed on the screen. So University of Maryland School of Medicine, USDA, FDA, NIST, um, Naval Research Facilities, um, Children's National, uh, clinical internships, NIH is pretty common. We've even had people intern, uh, intern at the Smithsonian, um, and for out-of-state students, they found opportunities, many of them have found opportunities in their home state as well, um, which is also an option. 
Next slide. It's uh, stuck, so give me a second here. <laughs> I may have to stop sharing and come back. So one sec. While we're doing that, um, and I haven't been able to keep up with all of the questions in the chat, do people have questions that they're willing to turn their mic on and ask? Sabrina, there's one question in the chat that I wanted you to answer. I think I know the answer, but I'd rather you answer it. Um, sure. And the question is, I'm not taking AP Bio, but I plan to take the exam since I'm taking a different science class with a large content overlap. If I get a four or five on the exam, would I be able to join even if I haven't taken the class? Yes. The answer to that is yes. So the AP exam um, essentially says, or IB, whichever exam that you're taking, says that you have mastered this content and the university has agreed with the board that tests you that that's equivalent to college credit. So there are definitely students who their um, high school doesn't match up quite right with the AP exam, but it's close enough that they can take the exam and do well. Um, and so that does happen. Okay, so I will keep going and we are looking forward to your questions. Um, so we do have a required service learning requirement. It's uh, 25 hours, but it is actually, you get credit for that through our HLSC 100 and 102 classes. Um, there's a variety of service learning opportunities. Um, so one of those is an alternative spring break. So we have our own alternative spring break trip, Terps Helping, yeah, Terps Helping Turtles with the Karen Baisley Sea Turtle Rescue and Re Rehab Rehabilitation Hospital in Topsail Island, North Carolina. That's currently on hold because all AB trips are currently on hold because of COVID, um, but it's one of the unique opportunities we have. Um, we've had students start their own service organizations. Some of those are listed at the bottom. Um, so more recently, the Every Child Project, which is a tutoring program that really took off during COVID. Rising Researchers, which goes out and teaches um, high school students about research in local high schools. Um, Young Science Initiative, Terps for Service Members. Um, Public Health Without Borders, Global Dental Brigade. These are all different organizations that our students have become very interested in or started their own um, organizations or campus versions of this as part of their service learning uh, project. We also have different opportunities students can um, essentially work with or, or get plugged into. So we actually see there um, in the top right is um, Terp Farm, um, which grows food. It's associated with the university. Um, and you're able to volunteer there and um, that food actually goes into the campus pantry and other places um, for people with food insecurities. Um, so there are a variety of different um, service learning organizations or opportunities that you can get interested in. Um, we like to say that service learning is, is not a fluke, it's a requirement. Um, it's something we're actually really excited about because we want people to be really excited about giving back to our community. Um, so that's something that I know our students really enjoy. And just a small story, um, it wasn't originally part of our program when this started and the students actually came to us and demanded that service learning be part of our program. And it has been ever since. And it's been very, very popular. Okay, so this is us. Um, I will say we are happy to, so after all this is over, we are happy to answer any of your questions. We do have a website that's been updated with FAQs about everything um, from you know, AP scores to um, where we live. What you actually see in the background is La Plata Hall, which is where um, all of our first year students live. Yes, it has air conditioning. Yes, it's exciting. Um, so you can reach out, you can look on the web or you can reach out to us at ils-honors at umt.edu and we are happy to answer your questions. Next slide. Oh, well, the last slide was just our presenters. Um, so there's a bunch of questions in chat. Um, and I know our ILS students are also super excited to start answering, um, answering your questions as well. So, uh, so can I ask, and this is actually a technical question, so I can answer this one. 
Um, is it possible to take any of the honors science classes um, that I showed if you're in a different LLP? Um, I know you can do H versions classes as honors students, but are they specifically for ILS students? Um, so our first year courses are um, only open to ILS students. So the ones we listed in red there were only open to ILS students. Our second year courses oftentimes are open to other um, honors students as well. But for instance, I teach the honor cell biology class. ILS students get preference. And if they're extra seats, then other honor students can take that as well. Um, but it kind of depends. The HLSC courses um, are ILS only. The H version courses do allow other honor students to take it, but we specifically designed it. So your first year courses will be um, ILS only. Okay. Um, there are a lot of questions. Sabrina, do you want me to ask some of the questions? Yes, please, Jenny, I've been keeping up. Okay. Um, I want to double major in math and molecular biology on the pre-med track. Is it feasible to double major in such a rigorous environment? Uh, we have several double majors in our group. Would either any of you like to add to that? Uh, yeah, I can quickly speak to being a bio and public health double. Um, thankfully, a lot of the classes kind of overlap, and particularly they overlap in my pre-professional interests, um, as I hope to matriculate to BA school. Uh, it helps that, you know, AP credit got me out of a lot of introductory courses. Um, 160, 161, 170, 171. Uh, the things that you need to get into ILS that already gives you a pretty significant head start. I think that's like eight credits alone, which is like half a semester, which is crazy. Um, I'm actually also hoping to double degree and graduate early. So it can definitely be done. Um, you just kind of like, if you really enjoy your classes, which I do, uh, I don't think it's really bad at all. Um, the transition uh, will take a little bit of time to kind of learn to think like a college student, but I would say it's definitely doable. I'll add a comment here, if I could. And uh, so uh, before I became director, I did have an ILS student in my lab who was double majoring in math and biological sciences. And uh, currently she's in medical school. She was very strong in math. It was not an issue for her and she could handle the rigor of both. Tahe, I know you wanted to say something. Yeah, um, coming from like somebody whose majors don't overlap like at all in terms of coursework, I think coming in knowing that you want a double major is super helpful. Um, something that I did after I decided to pick up my crim major um, after my first semester was make a, a massive four year plan just to see if it was feasible. And to echo what Luke said, like if you come in with AP credits or just things that would transfer over, it really does help. Um, and I, I don't personally know the overlap between bio and math, but bio and crim is possible. So depending on like your personal, like, um, like where you stand and like your credits, I think definitely just be organized about it, but I, it's definitely possible. Like, don't worry about the rigor. I see a question here about which classes would the four or five on AP Bio replace? The classes are BSCI 160 and BSCI 170. Those are the freshman bio classes. So there's also a question about if I am majoring in a non-STEM field, is ILS right for me? I would say it depends. So you're going to be required to take a lot of biology. Um, if biology is not a thing that makes you happy and you enjoy taking, then there might be a different program that's a better match for you. So we may have people who are, say, majoring in math or engineering, but are actually interested in doing pre-med or pre-PA, in which case the same courses that they would have to take for their future career are the same courses you have to take for ILS, in which case it's a nice match. But if say you're an art history major and think genetics is boring, then probably we are not the best match for you guys. Um, personally, I think genetics is super exciting and I can tell you all about it if you're interested. Um, but um, it, it it depends. We match up really, really nicely. Um, like our curriculum matches very, very nicely for our, any of the concentrations within biological sciences, our chemists, our, um, so chemistry, biochemistry, 
chemical engineers, uh, bioengineers, neuroscience, psych, um, public health science. Am I missing any? Okay, but they they match up nicely with a wide variety of biology related majors. But if biology is not a thing that you, you enjoy, you're probably a bad match. Like we've definitely had mechanical engineers who um, were really interested in the program. And then they looked at the curriculum really hard and decided that they never wanted to take a biology course, in which case we found them a different program that they were a better fit for. We have a question about how would you describe the vibe of ILS? I think I'd like the students to handle that. Our panel, I meant. Um, I can talk a little bit. The vibe of ILS uh, totally changes from year to year. So uh, like first year, freshman year, you're literally living with everybody and you're taking the same classes as them. And you get really close with these people who are your neighbors and your classmates and everything. And the vibe is very supportive. Everybody's trying to figure out what they want to do with their life. Um, and also like make friends and it's college and all this stuff. So I think it's just super supportive um, and a lot of fun. And then as you get older, you moved out to different places. People have, you know, are pursuing their respective career paths. And then um, ILS is still like this bonding thing where, you know, like even if you're not seeing these people every day, you're still like saying hi to them on campus. Like personally, I see Luke all the time and I'm like, hey. <laughs> So like, it's really cool. You always end up seeing these people like around campus. You'll probably be taking more classes with them as you keep going further and further. And it's always nice to just see a friendly face on like such a big campus. The word that I was gonna use to describe ILS particularly in the first year would definitely be supportive. Um, I met a lot of people of a lot of different interests and every single one of them has meant the world to me. Um, they're all, uh, super friendly people. It's really difficult to articulate what it feels like to be in a uh, common room in your dorm at like two in the morning and everyone's like playing the ukulele, but like that happened a couple of times and it was really fun uh, with a bunch of people that I've never met before. Uh, like Ashley said, you kind of branch out after that, but I think she's in my neuro class and I sit in the back of the class with one of my other friends from ILS. Uh, you definitely make some bonds that don't go away, at least while you're in college. College. We'll see what happens after college. I haven't gone to that part yet. Um, like I mentioned, uh, I'm still living with my freshman year uh, roommate. Uh, he's a super cool guy. Um, so yeah, definitely supportive. Um, the classes can be intense, which is why I think having a very strong social net is really important. And I think ILS provides that for you. Yeah, we should just see what should they do, right? Trade applied and what just to learn. Yeah. I don't know if that's it. Okay, I don't think that was a question for us. Um, we're getting a bunch of questions about the biology requirement, um, and we haven't really addressed sophomore admissions, so I thought I'd go ahead and do that real quick. Um, so to start in our curriculum, you have to transfer in a minimum of by Psi 170, and there are a variety of ways to do that, either IB credit, AP credit, community college credit um, in any variety of ways, but to start our, our first semester freshman course, you'll need that credit. We are an advanced biology program. Um, however, if you are taking AP bio now or have taken AP bio and you do not get the score that you want to transfer the credit in and you still wanna be part of ILS, we do have a sophomore admissions process. So what that means is you can come to the University of Maryland, take the intro bio courses and then come into ILS your sophomore year if you choose. Um, so that is always open to you as well. But to start our first class, you have to have credit for BISI 170. Um, hopefully that, ad that addressed everyone's questions. Did you wanna add something, Jenny? Yeah, someone asked about taking a bio class over the summer. You can, um, but uh, we try to encourage people not to try to make last minute changes in terms of like taking extra classes over the summer just to switch which honors program they're in. Um, it tends to be stressful and then you have to get it in right before you go to college. We would encourage you guys just to apply to the program that's the best match for you. Um, and if you don't get into the program you like, 
any student can actually request the transfer programs after their, so starting their sophomore year, so the, the request would go in in the second semester of your freshman year and switch programs. So that's always available. Um, and ILS has always had sophomore admissions into the program. So that's always available as well. Okay. So we had some questions about internships and study abroad. Um, would anyone like to take the internship question? I can take the internship question. Um, so I did research at UPenn at a clinic, in a clinical research program this past summer. Um, and I actually learned about the opportunity through my undergraduate TA in uh, HLSC 207. And uh, yeah, we were just, she was just holding office hours one and we were talking about internships and she, was, she had done this program before and she was like, you should apply for it. And so I applied for it and uh, I was very fortunate to get admitted. Um, and it was a super amazing experience. Uh, I got to work with a surgeon um, who does work at UPenn and we were able to do like some clinical research stuff based on like big data and how that affects like hospitals and how that affects like how doctors can treat their patients and stuff like that. And so it was a super awesome opportunity. Um, so that was just like, that was my experience uh, with research. I know there are tons of people here who have done research on campus, if that's something that you're looking for. I was looking more for like a diversity of research experience. So I didn't really, I just wanted to like see different, all different kinds and stuff like that. Um, so that's why I was super interested in a clinical research position but uh, there are definitely a million different research uh, avenues you could go once you're here. So there was also a question. I, I will say our students often go to a variety of different um, internships based on their interests and what they're excited about. We encourage students to try out whatever is going to help them um, you know, in their career path, whatever that happens to be. So hey, you totally have your hand up, go ahead. Yeah, um, before I guess we move on uh, to the next uh, part, but so, um, on-campus research is very easy to find. And like we've all said before a million times, the staff are super supportive in helping you find those opportunities. And also like the older ILS students, and I got one of my friends into a lab that like just wasn't right for me. Um, and then for the study abroad, yes, it's possible. I went on the London trip that was associated with ILS, but I also have friends who pre-COVID went on their own study abroad trips who are also in ILS. So it very much depends on your major, how well you plan it beforehand, what classes you take while you're abroad and like trying to fit your schedule around that. Um, but it is definitely possible. And if you can do it, I would highly, highly, highly recommend it. I just want to answer quickly a question about courses being, whether they're geared towards pre-med. I just want to, uh, the courses in ILS are not geared towards pre-med. We just structure them to offer the best, excellent education for life sciences. Your pre-med requirements, most of them will be fulfilled through a variety of courses offered in departments. Yeah. For instance, you have to take sociology classes, totally not part of ILS um, if you're pre-med. And I believe there was one other question about animal science majors and we definitely have animal sciences majors. They're not the majority, um, but we do definitely have animal science majors every year. Um, and many of them are um, pre-veterinary. Um, we have a few people who go straight into jobs after they graduate, but most of our animal science majors are pre-vet um, on a pre-vet track. Okay. There's a question uh, about what was it like living on campus in for the first year? I vote Luke. You're up. Friend. Yeah, well, for for myself and Ashley, it kind of got cut off by COVID. We kind of got sent home like right when we came back from spring semester. Uh, I will say that fall was definitely a very memorable semester. Um, I, I have this funny story of going out to see like it too at like one in the morning with a bunch of my friends and then I had Dr. Cook uh his 207 class the next morning uh, and so we all rolled up to class pretty groggy um 
like I said, you make a ton of friends. Uh, you made some pretty uh, unforgettable memories, I would say. Um, I wish, of course, that I had a full year to live on campus, but, you know, such is life. Um, but yeah, very memorable. Uh, kind of whatever you make of it. Uh, I had a lot of friends who would just play Super Smash Brothers Melee. Uh, I had a lot of friends who would go off and explore DC. So it's up to you. Um, also, just to emphasize, like, what Luke just said about it really is what you make of it. I think, obviously, college is a really scary time, um, but you do, there is a level of, like, putting yourself out there that you have to do in order to make those friends and foster those relationships that the three of us have. Um, so don't be afraid when you do come. Like, everybody is new. Every, like, even if it seems like people know each other, like, everybody's always willing to, like, get to know more people. Um, but yeah, I had a full freshman year and it was like my friends and I still talk about like, well, I remember freshman year when we did XYZ because we all lived on campus at that time. Um, so if it's something that's feasible, I would, again, also recommend it. Um, we had a question about environmental science for ecology majors. So there is a gen bio and then there's an ecology concentration and then bi And we do have some students that are major in that every year. Um, we have left environmental science um, or environmental science and technology majors because the curriculum doesn't match as, as well um, as with the biological science majors. We do have them from time to time. Um, Jenny, what else have we missed in the chat? Since the program seems like it is designed around the requirements for med school slash other professional schools and most of the students are pre-med, do you think it is not as good of an option for those who aren't taking that route? The program is not designed to place students in medical school. It is a life sciences program. We happen to have many pre-med students, but it is 45% non-pre-med students. We do prepare students very well for all sorts of professional schools and graduate schools. So many of our students go on to pursue PhDs, public health, or join the workforce. And Sabrina, you may know better those statistics than I do, but uh, I think we're somewhere around 45, 40 to 45% who are not pre-med. Yeah, somewhere in there. So we have people who go on to a variety of different things. Um, Grad school, um, we do have people that go to pre-PA. Um, we do have, <laughs> Luke's like, yes, yes, I am. Um, I think people who go out and get jobs. Our bioengineers are um, uh, oftentimes will go out into the workforce. Um, trying to think. It's probably fair to say that we reflect the same proportion of life science students' interests. So even if you go outside of ILS, you see the same kind of proportions of people who want to go to medical school versus not. Yeah, that is that is entirely fair. But yes, we do have a variety of different um, interests and majors. Um, gonna just you know throw a shout out to all the plant science people out there. Yay, plants! Because um, they're out there too. So we have some um, agriculture, so AGNR type majors as well. So. It is not just pre-med, just wanna throw that out there. We do have a lot of pre-meds, but that's not the only one. Um, but many of our requirements match up for professional schools. Um, so it makes it really easy. Um, there's also a question about, would there be a better honors program for someone majoring in environmental science or is this the best one? And I, I want to point out here that your major does not have to match with your living learning program. Um, oftentimes it does. There are certainly students who choose um, an LLP that matches completely with what they're majoring in, but then there are also students who choose an LLP that is completely different. So what your major is does not need to guide your LLP choice. I'm going to go with what she said. <laughs> but yeah. You can you can be an NELP and major in anything if you're in a if you're in a major related to biological sciences, the courses match up and it double counts more than with other majors, but that's totally fine. Um, we've definitely had people decide after their first year that they're kind of done with biology and then our government and politics majors. 
that's okay. We have two of, two of the choices of courses are writing intensive that you can choose your second year um, instead of say taking cell biology or bioinformatics. Yeah, I was gonna say, I think that you should consider an LLP program that you are interested in, regardless of whether that is the same thing as your major. Oftentimes it will be the same thing as your major because your major is something you're interested in, hopefully. Um, but that <laughs> does not have to be the case. Nope. Um, so there's another great question here. I think what kind of resources available to, are available to students after their first two years in the program? I don't know. What resources are out there, Dahe? <laughs> Um, I really like how I'm still included in the ILS newsletter. I think there's always like cute information there. And also there's like a great ILS network. Um, I like my older sister was also in ILS and her friends were in ILS. And so even when I have questions, like I can ask them immediately. And then also like the other day, the other last week I went into the ILS office to see Dr. Kramer and I was talking about my future life plans and she was like, oh, I can connect you to this student who might be, who's doing something you might be interested in. And so if you like create those bonds, like, again, this broken record, but everyone's so supportive. So like the supportive network is still there. Like, I think the stuff, even after you're old like me, um, you can still get the same amount of support that you get freshman year as you do senior year. Um, were you going to say something, Luke? No. Okay. I was going to say, no, we often say, I love the ILS newsletter. It's my favorite thing. It's always so colorful and there's so many different opportunities in there. Uh, they always have like career things to look out for, uh, different internships, stuff like that. Highly recommend the ILS newsletter. You get it all for you. It's a great subscription. Wonderful. Yeah. I was just going to throw out where there we do. A, we also do a lot of career advising. Uh, one of my former students who is now working at Booz Allen Hamilton, uh, she called it her quarter life crisis every semester. Um, she had a quarter life crisis about what she wanted to do with the rest of her life, just about every semester. And every semester I chatted with her about it. Um, she's still figuring out what she wants to do with the rest of her life. And that's okay too. Um, so a lot of advising, um, we have, um, we do a lot of recommendation letters for professional schools and other places. Um, and many of our upperclassmen are also TAs for our courses as well. So anything else you want to add, Najib? No, uh, sorry. I, I was reading the questions on the side. <laughs> We're distracted <laughs> here. <laughs> the, uh, um, th there's a question that I would like you to answer, Sabrina, with regards to IB uh, bio HL. The, perhaps you can uh, uh, give a bit more detail about what we like, what we require. Yeah. So really the answer is what transfers. We don't control what transfers into the university that's actually handled by the transfer office. Um, but I know that an AP bio score four or five transfers in two courses. So 160 and 170, by 160, 170. IB, um, HL, a five or a six score will transfer you 170, which will also um, be enough to start our curriculum. So AP gets you one more credit, but IB is perfectly fine to start the start for um, our first ILS course. Um, and by side 160 isn't required for all majors. It really kind of depends on what you're interested in. So there is no favorite between IB and AP, if that helps. Um, other questions? So there was a question about taking an intro bio course and got credit at another university. It depends about transfers. So there is, um, there are, there's a bio for non-majors, which doesn't count for the bi-sci majors and doesn't count for ILS and doesn't count as a prereq, all the 200 level bi-sci courses. If that's yours, it doesn't, it doesn't transfer in quite right. So you can check the transfer credit database um, and we can point you in the right direction for that but it kind of depends. And those are all agreements between different universities. If you're within the state of Maryland, most of the universities and colleges and definitely between the community college and any of the state of Maryland universities, um, we have all of these um, agreements essentially worked out. If you're transferring in credit from say an institution in Texas, we may not have evaluated it yet. So we'd have to go through an evaluation process and get it figured out and work with the department to do that. We can totally do it. Um, but 
I do know a lot of the schools in the East Coast, we've already worked out all these agreements and we have really great agreements with the community college in Maryland. Um, so hope that helps. Um, are there any ILS honor specific scholarships? Do you wanna talk about the Goff scholarship, Najib? Uh, there is one uh, golf scholarship that's just awarded once yearly to one student, uh, uh, and it's awarded for just excellent excellence in research and commitment to service. We do have a new series of scholarships. They are these are not tuition remission, and they're not uh, money in your account. Essentially, they are research scholarships. They offer you anywhere from one thousand to two thousand dollars, which you can apply to research. They make you a much more attractive candidate when you apply for research or internships in various labs. But perhaps, Jenny, you can tell them a little bit about some of the Banneker key scholarships and other scholarships that are offered to the honors scholars, not the ILS. Right, so there's um, academic merit scholarships that students and honors are all considered for. There's not a guarantee that every single student invited to honors will get a scholarship, um, but everyone will certainly be considered for the academic merit scholarships. The Banneker key notifications went out last week all of the rest of the academic merit scholarships will go out around March 1st. Um, and I could also address that once our students get on campus and our students here, um, there's the National Scholarships Office, which helps um, match students with um, national and international awards. And um, I don't know the names off the top of my head, but Najib and Sabrina, I know that many of your students have been very successful at um, earning and receiving um, some of those uh, scholarships. Um, for, you know, beyond their time at the University of Maryland. Um, yes, we, we've had, um, we've had some students go on and do some pretty cool stuff. Um, so Yusuf Khan, who is now at Stanford doing his PhD, went to the UK on a Gates, Gates Cambridge, I think. No, Knight Tennessee. My Yes. I think it was in North Tennessee. We've had Rhodes students, uh, uh, some Marshall scholarships, and uh, Churchill. Yes. Um, and it we was current, church. Yeah. And Viraj Shah is currently uh, with a church, not a church, um, Gates Cambridge in the UK. I'm just going to throw out there those questions, people asking about study abroad. Um, Emily Kraft, who is my UTA from last semester for Cell Bio, is currently at Oxford study abroad. Um, for this semester. So we do have a variety of very successful students. We have any number of students who did Fulbrights after they finished up. Um, trying to think, others as well. Um, there was one credit about AP Bio. If you took AP Bio and get a score of four or five, even if you applied it to Montgomery College, I believe you can send your scores to Maryland and Maryland transfers a four or five as two courses. Um, and I think that was Crystal who asked that question. Um, all right, Najib, you've got the chemistry question. All right, so with the time we have left, um, I was hoping our ILS panelists would be willing to ask, answer a quick question. So. What is something that helped you decide which LLP program to preference when you were in, you know, when you were a high school senior? And then my next question, if we have time for it, is what advice you would have for um, new freshmen coming on campus? I can take this first for the first question, at least. Um, like I said, my older sister was an ILS student, so I kind of had an understanding already of um, how like great the community was. And then for me personally, I remember I was between ILS and DCC, I think, as my like top two. Um, and then I think I, I put ILS first ultimately because even though like, like I initially came in thinking I'd be pre-med, that did not happen, but that's okay. Um, <laughs> I thought that the, I really like the idea of having those small individual, more individualized science courses offered to me because 
I have heard about like larger lecture bio classes and how those can be kind of tricky. So personally, I do better. Like I knew I did, I do better in smaller learning environments. So knowing that I could get that, get my STEM, like part of my STEM curriculum in that environment was like a big like drawing factor place for me personally. Ashley or Luke, what made you, made you, or what helped you decide which program? Ashley, um, do you want to go first? Yeah, I, so for me, I did not come into knowing what I wanted to do. So, and I definitely didn't want to go to med school. Um, but I liked, I did apply as like, I think like a microbio major or something like that. Cause just cause I liked this class in high school. Um, and then I also really like the idea of a smaller like cohort size. I know that ILS usually has around like a hundred, uh, people in each cohort. And I like that a lot. Uh, I like that idea a lot just because I know that with such a big school, like I wanted to have a smaller, like community and so um it was a pretty easy decision for me and also ILS just has a good reputation like everybody's always every alum always has great things to say about it um so I for me it just I didn't there weren't really any other contenders um I was in a pretty uh, fortunate situation where one of my lifelong friends is actually in ILS. Um, speaking of, she actually studied abroad in Germany and I think she's doing it again. Her name is Caroline Pugh, wonderful human being. Um, and I remember in like January of my senior year of high school, she was like, oh my God, you need to sign up for this program. It's called ILS. You're gonna do all these really crazy things. And I was like, I don't know what that means, but okay. Um, and so then I looked into it a little more and I actually specifically looked at what ILS offered and then compared that to what I wanted out of college. And it was almost 100% overlap. It, act, it just happened to work out really well for me. Um, and then I think Dr. Kramer, you also added uh, one piece of advice uh, that I, would, I wish I knew myself and maybe that I would give to my, myself now. Um, I think I'll split it up into two components. Uh, it would definitely be, um, take it slow and be kind to yourself be nicer to yourself than you think you should be um transitioning to college is really really like frightening um even if you don't think it will be there's gonna be something you don't expect uh that's okay don't be like oh, i should have seen that coming um classes are gonna be pretty different than they were in high school that's okay um be patient with yourself be as patient with yourself as you would be anyone else um it can get a little intense so if you ever need help if you ever need to talk to someone reach out. I promise there will be people at ILS uh, who want to talk to you. Um, and yeah, I have really enjoyed my time here. I think I've grown a lot as a human being, and I'm really grateful for the opportunity to do that. I would encourage all of you, if you think uh, ILS matches a lot of your interests, to go for it. Uh, I found that everything I wanted to do, ILS offered. Um, so yeah, I hope you all consider making us your top choice. Um, yeah, and it was really great uh, talking to everyone today. Yeah. Uh, Tahe, yes. What advice would you have for new freshmen? Okay. Um, my, Luke kind of took my, like, the be nice to yourself. I think there's a lot of stress and unnecessary pressure that surrounds just academia in general. Um, my other piece of advice is, like, don't be afraid of, like, like this is so cliche, like, starting over in a sense or realizing halfway through your college career, like, oh, shoot, I'm not doing what I want to do. Like, that's okay. That's what college is. It really is a learning process. Um, kind of like Ashley said, she learned what she wanted to do while in college. I'm a senior and I still am not 100% sure, but every, like everyone says, like, it is 100% okay. Like, I realized I wasn't pre-med, I think, probably my junior year after I had finished ILS. Um, but I, no regrets still. Um, I, seven of my best friends are, like, from the program with me. Um, but yeah, just definitely don't be afraid of trying new things and realizing if you don't like them, like that's okay too. Like just try something else then. Like there will be something that you will find that you that brings you so much joy, um, however long that might take. Okay, Ashley, what is your advice? Um, I'm gonna say going off of what she was saying that you like throughout college, I think it's very important to take time to reflect on what you're doing, 
why you're doing it and if it makes you happy. So like, and this is not just about like what your major is, what you want to do with your life. It's literally like extracurriculars. Like, um, I like to play soccer. It makes me feel good mentally and physically. I joined club soccer and I absolutely have loved this experience. So like that goes to say for literally everything, even if it's like about your major, like, you know, maybe you start as an econ major and you're like, oh, I don't like this. Well, then go find something that you like. Um, so I think that's like a really big part of it is that you really need to take some time whenever you can to just reflect on what you're doing, figure out why you're doing it and see if it makes you happy and stop doing things that don't make you happy. And that's, that's all I've learned so far. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to throw out one last thing before we let everyone go. And this is one of my favorite memories of Luke. So, uh, and then I just want to say just because you might be interested in STEM does not mean you also cannot be creative for all of us out there who are both. We definitely have art majors or art history majors. We have theater double majors um, who are also majoring in biological sciences. Um, but so Luke is, what he hasn't mentioned is also a music minor. And so um, for, yes, Jenny's Jenny's out there because she used to work in the school of music. Um, and uh, for um, my class, Cell Bio, which is a, which is a sophomore course, um, I have uh, students go to research seminars and you know reflect on that, and they can do it in many different mediums. And um, Luke did his two song. Some of the best videos I I have ever had in Cell Bio, and still make me smile. Um, every time I see them. So just want to throw that out there that you can do a variety of different things um, and embrace creativity in, in, in STEM as well. Um, so as you're trying to figure out like how to combine any number of different interests and paths as you're figuring it out. So Dr. just Kramer to share. Class was one of my favorite classes I've had in college. And uh, <laughs> the small part of that was putting on my mom's glasses and jacket from like the eighties and sitting in Hotel California and then changing my outfit and doing my own rendition of Rapper's Delight. So uh, definitely a lot of memories to be made in Iowa. Totally one of my favorites. I will not forget, just want to share. Um, and Jenny is right here at time. <laughs> All right. I'm not mistaken, I believe Jenny got you, you got your PhD in music, is that correct? <laughs> my doctorate, yes, yes, in music, that yes. is correct. All right. Um, so I want to thank ILS um, and especially the students um, for so much information that is so helpful. Um, 